Hey, everybody. I'm John Granado. That's Josh Jordan. You can hear us on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. You can also see Josh's work at sportsmaphouston.com. Hit subscribe so you get all of our content here on YouTube. Hey, Josh, I don't think I've ever been more enthusiastic and encouraged about a team for three quarters and then more disappointed in a team and for the final quarter and overtime than I was last week for the Texans. Literally, I was really, really, really happy about what they were doing for three quarters and then so, so t- disappointed that it's the same old Texans. I, I just I just don't know how to feel. How, how, how should I feel about the Texans heading into Denver? I, I think you should be more encouraged than you feel like mentally and let me tell you why I went back and rewatched the game to where the emotion was taken out of it you know and I just watched Davis Mills I watched Stingley I watched the whole thing again and I felt a lot better about it because I you know I wasn't all charged up you know it while watching the game I was really down on Davis Mills and how that game ended but when I went back and watched it he did a lot more good than I remember he played a lot better than I remembered in the moment so I think there's some encouraging things the defense played very well they just got a little tired at the end of the game Davis Mills looked good Brandon Cooks looked good look the Damian Pierce thing really stood out to me my biggest takeaway there was he was really valuable to them in play action by that meaning like the defense really sucked up and, and honored the run when Damian Pierce was on the field and that's when Davis Mills had some of his biggest throws to the tight ends to Brandon Cooks so I think they need to have Pierce on the field just to give the defense a player to respect well one thing I, I and, and they admitted you know what we didn't use Damian enough and they are going to use him more uh it is you know you are telling Denver what you're doing but you know what like you said it may work out really really well in play action again uh this week I was discouraged by the wide receivers especially Nico I mean you gotta you gotta find a way to get that guy the ball I was encouraged with their three tight end set you know because it did produce a couple of touchdowns having OJ Howard a, a guy who can catch balls maybe he's going to be the OJ Howard that was a first round pick um, we'll see. And you're right. The defense looked r- really, really good for a while. And then they looked awful. So I'm not sure which one that we are going to see. We'll talk more about that in just a second. But I got to talk right now about Dr. Manavis, 975prostate.com. Guys, if you're a little bit older like me, you know, you could have an enlarged prostate. And if you do have an enlarged prostate, there is one place to go. Do not let your doctor tell you that you should get surgery. Period. Exclamation point. You go see Dr. Manavis because she is going to make sure that you get that enlarged prostate shrunk and she's going to do it with an IV and not surgery. And it's going to be, I'm telling you, this is the only way to do it. Do not get surgery. Go to 975prostate.com. All right. What do you think? Okay. Give me under over Damian Pierce targets and, and carries. Ooh, he had 12 total touches last week. So I'm thinking they're going to be in the 20 total touches range. So, you know, maybe he gets 16 carries, you know, maybe four catches, something like that. And I will point out that Rex Burkhead had the most uh, targets outside of Brandon Cooks in that game the other day. (laughs) which also tells me that it's not necessarily Damian Pierce you're worried about him in pass protection because if he's out running routes, then you're not worried about him protecting the quarterback, which Burkhead, they used him a lot that way. So I think they're going to use him a lot more. And I think I don't want to judge them too harshly on this game, and here's why. They played overtime. They're going to be tired. I think the Broncos are going to be tired too because they played on Monday Night Football. But you're also going in against a, an angry Russell Wilson here, you know, and that mm-hmm. was a total mind bleep for him, you know, last week because most teams when they face their former team, it's not the first game of the season right after they leave. You know, usually there's a little time in between. So I think we need to hold our expectations down. If Deshaun Watson was the quarterback of this team and they went to Denver and lost to Russell Wilson. We wouldn't be saying, oh, the season's over. You know, that was a terrible loss. We'd just be like, oh, well, going to Denver's tough. I'm more worried about how they look against the Bears the week after that, Justin Fields, and then two weeks after that when they face Trevor Lawrence. I want to see how Davis Mills plays against his contemporaries and against teams that are beatable. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it happened twice last week, actually, with Baker Mayfield facing his former team first game. Yeah. It happened with Russell Wilson, and it's going to happen again with Deshaun Watson when he comes back. That first game is against his former team. So interesting. I don't, I don't know that we've seen that ever, that your first game uh, for three different guys is going to be against your former team. I I, I like your tw- 20-something has got to be the number for Damian Pierce. I think five or six at least targets, maybe seven targets for Nico. You've got to get that going. I'd love to see a couple more for O.J. Howard, uh, three, four, five. I'd like to see him target O.J. Howard and see if he is that guy of old. And, uh, you know, Brandon Cooks has got to have a, a, a big game as well. That's his whoopee. That's his security blanket. And so he's got to have a big game as well. I, I love the Texans plus 10, if you want to know the truth. I think that this is this is a nice situation for them. I know that Denver's going to be angry. I just don't think Denver's that good, if you want to know the truth. And I don't think Nathaniel Hackett is all that good. We'll find out if he can adjust too, because he was not good on Monday night. No, and it's interesting that we have two of the most talked about decisions at the end of the game. These two coaches, yeah. with Lovey opting to punt, and then we know what happened with the Broncos and them missing the field goal. So this is kind of a perfect match. But it's the matchup you know, we'll of two poor decisions. <laughs> yeah, on Sunday in in Denver. Absolutely, I, I'm excited about this one, John. Let's go Texans.